question. How old do you have to be to conduct advanced biology experiments at Northwestern? Answer, would you believe as young as six? It's true, and it's all because of a special program that brings young people to campus and introduces them to the wonders of the science laboratory. Now this is the fun part. You're gonna mash, okay? Oh, can you zip that, please? Yeah, so, so smash the plum? Just smash the plum, do not break the bag. It's gonna be a big mess if you do. Yeah. What you're looking at is a classroom of elementary school students mashing up plums, and all for one simple reason. They're extracting DNA. You break open the cells and you put them in isopropanol, cold isopropanol, and then the DNA precipitates out. If you're skeptical whether children of this age can really appreciate the core ideas of this experiment, then just listen to third graders Lucas Gover and Benjamin Berghammer. So first, we eat this smash plums up. And then put them in the ice, basically. And we, and we did that to some, so we could break the walls. We break wall. the walls of cell because inside cells there's DNA. Yeah, we tried to break the membrane so we could get the DNA inside this little tube. Be skeptical no more. This advanced learning comes courtesy of a program called Laboratory Adventures in the Biological Sciences, or simply labs. On four consecutive Saturdays, there are two sets of labs classes. One for kids aged six to nine. The other for middle schoolers aged 10 to 13. At the end of class, parents can hear the excitement. Do you see those dots? Yeah. It's got DNA. It's got colors, like stuff that forms codes. Labs is the brainchild of Northwestern biology professor Rick Morimoto. So what are you going to do today? Yeah. Uh-huh. 17 years ago, Morimoto thought about starting a series of college-level biology classes for kids. With help from his wife, Joyce, he became inspired. We had children who at that time were in elementary school and realized, wouldn't it be great that they had something to complement the science that they got in school? The idea was to make the facilities of Northwestern available to these junior scientists. That meant laboratories, teaching assistants, equipment, and expertise. Further, the Morimoto's wanted different levels of teaching. Along with the college TAs, high school students also play a part. So we wanted an opportunity for the kids who weren't much older than the children in the labs program to be able to feel like they had something that they could offer and teach. And fundamentally, the hope was to represent science as more than just a set of facts to be memorized, but to show how it can really come alive. And the beauty of biology and science is curiosity. And if you make it simple, and you make it accessible, and you make it fun, then I think what child wouldn't be ecstatic to learn about science? Come on, guys, let me see. So I just... Yours is perfect! I can't really like... <laughs> the challenge was to offer a more intricate experiment, one beyond the means of most elementary and secondary schools. You're all going to get an egg, and you're going to isolate the specific protein from the egg. Anna Svensson is a postdoctoral student, trying to find the right level of complexity with a procedure she calls an egg experiment. By employing the basic principle that positive and negative charges attract, she is teaching how to purify a protein, in this case lysozyme, found in egg whites. They're going to use the charge reaction, you know, plus attracts to minus, and based on that property of lysozyme, they're going to extract it from the egg white. I learned how much protein is in the yolk. I didn't know there was so much, and I will never look at eggs the same way again. Why do we keep putting all our yolk liquid into here and the resin into here? So we want to separate that resin from the protein. Neil Dewan is a Northwestern senior who hopes to become an MD, PhD in biological sciences. He says labs is not only good for the young students, he's getting a lot out of it too. So this is definitely a very valuable experience for me to learn how to communicate the actual biological aspects of these experiments to someone else. Because in classes I learn 
um, and told all this information, but actually taking it in and teaching someone else is really, really helping me. So we added our resin, which has a, what charge does the and resin have? The resin has a negative charge. But Neil also has no doubt he's part of a team that is teaching these children to do some pretty cool stuff. They're doing techniques that are done in every biology lab in the country, and they're really at a level that is startling. When I first came here, it was really amazing to me that they're doing biological experiments that most people don't see till college. Mixed in with the sophisticated science is a good measure of fun. For the older kids, a mystery lurks, and the students will have to use science to solve it. 20 years ago, there wasn't CSI. And so what we have now is a whole generation of youth that actually sees on television that science could be interesting. It's analytic, it could be fun, they get pictures of laboratories. So we realize, let's capitalize on it. This is a mock murder scene. The victim, a fictitious research scientist. Oh, we're trying to find out who's the killer, who killed the, what happened and who killed the guy. To get started, the lab students look at the raw data and argue about theories, motives, and suspects. I have another idea. Okay, after Dr. Erickson came in and killed him, Neil came in and took a knife and stabbed him in the heart. Wow. But there was no knife. There was no knife. No, 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 no. What the young detectives don't yet know is the pretend culprit is sitting with them. I am the murderer. Their teaching assistant, Shalini Dixit. Still. There's a struggle and I poisoned him with the bacteria, which is toxic, and that's how he died. So what, what do we usually look for in a crime scene? Hair. Hair, fingerprints. fingerprints. Over two sessions, the lab's kids will connect Shalini to the crime by blending lab science with deduction and matching clues with what they know. I found another finger, yeah, fingerprint on the CD. Oh, yep, oh, yeah, this one. It's kind of the same. The staff go all out with preparations even adding strips of fake blood. Oh, who, who wants to cut the blood? I'll, I'll do, do it. it. I'll do it. I know what it is. Then, then they simulate an experiment called the luminol test, yeah. where a reaction with iron in real blood creates a spooky glow in the dark. Oh my god, mine is blood. Mine is blood. It is blood. Oh my god. Ew, I don't want to hold this anymore. For Rick Morimoto, the hope is that for some of these kids, labs can be a profound life experience. And so maybe for children who've had labs, it'll be that they remember the year that they worked on projects and got excited about it and had a sense that this is what science is. It's accessible and it's fun. Morimoto emphasizes the goal is not necessarily to turn these children to a career, but more to turn them on to discovery. Like, I actually you learned why DNA is important here. And leave them with a lasting interest in science.